Chapter 4. Chase. Adrenaline streaked through him. He craned his neck to look out the back window. Mum looked too. Don't, Dad snapped. What do they want? Ben asked. Are they after us? Were we speeding? Dad drove on. He hadn't taken a break in five hours. Olive kneeled and stared out the back window, sucking her thumb. Sit, Ben whispered. But she didn't listen. This was not a surprise. Are you going to pull over? Mum asked. They rode on in silence. Ben wondered if Dad had heard her. There were two short, sharp blasts on the siren. Ben had never wanted anything more than to look out the back window. Adults were weird. If kids ran the world, everybody would be allowed to look when the police were following them, not just annoying little sisters. What are you doing? Mum asked. Are you going to pull over? Dad shrugged. We haven't done anything. Ray, it's the police. Dad wiped his nose on the back of his hand and kept driving. I haven't done anything. They drove on. If we haven't done anything, won't they let us go? Ben said helpfully. Surely that made sense to his father. When Ben became a police officer, if he pulled someone over and they hadn't done anything, he would let them go, for sure. An engine roared and a car moved up quickly beside them. The vehicle was royal blue, with a white and blue checker print, dark tinted windows and four antennas. Ben knew what all of the antennas were for. He had sat in a police car at the Royal Easter Show a few years ago and committed every detail to memory. One was an 800 megahertz enhancer, another was a VHF low band antenna, another for 468 megahertz, and then the standard radio antenna above the back window. The lights and siren weren't on, but the police officer, black wraparound sunglasses, short spiky hair, square head, pointed directly at Dad, then to the side of the road. Olive started to giggle. He looks angry, she said. Olive wanted to be a robber when she grew up, and a judge. Dad swore under his breath, but Ben heard it. Mum chewed what was left of her nails. Ben watched the cop. Dad kept driving. Tension spilled from the gaps around the windows and dripped down the sides of the car. With a low growl, Dad veered to the left and pulled onto the crunchy gravel shoulder of the road. He kept the engine running. They waited. Ben caught a glimpse of movement in the side mirror as the officer stepped out of his car, put on his police cap, shut his door and walked along the edge of the road toward them. He had a wide, steady walk, his legs far apart, his body like a gum tree trunk. He wore a light blue shirt, dark blue pants, dusty black boots, his pistol was slung low, strapped to his thigh with a harness. He stopped beside the car. His left arm was heavily tattooed like Dad's. Ben was surprised that police were allowed to have tattoos. Dad wound down the window. Mum smiled at the policeman. Can you please turn your engine off? Dad twisted the key and the car became still and quiet. Just the click and tick of hot motor and the tock, 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 tock of the indicator. Why didn't you slow down? The officer asked. Oh, I didn't see you at first. Did you hear my siren? Dad sat for a few seconds, then nodded. Why didn't you pull over? Dad waited. I'm not sure. Pause. Make sure you pull over more quickly in future. Dad nodded. Ben was listening so intently he forgot to breathe. He stared out the window at the officer whose thick reddish neck seemed to burst from his collar into a roll of fat that ended at his tight-fitting police cap. He looked about ten years younger than Dad. Early thirties. His name badge read Dan Tui. A good name for a police officer. Not as good as Ben Silver, but good. Is this your car? The officer asked. Yes, Dad said. Ben bit his tongue. Right. Do you know why I'm pulling you over? Dad sat there. Mum chewed on her finger and gave the officer a smile to make up for Dad's surliness. Ben still could not get used to her short whippersnipper haircut. Dad shook his head. No. You have no idea. Dad shook his head again. Dan Tui looked in at Olive and Ben sitting there in their school uniforms. A semi-trailer thundered by, ruffling the officer's shirt. Ben leaned forward in his seat, his right ear twisted toward the action, so he would not miss anything. Your indicator, the officer said seriously in his farmer's accent. You've had your indicator on for about 10 k's, you dodo. He smiled for the first time, then he laughed, a big policeman's belly laugh. 
Dad looked down and snapped off his blinker. He laughed too. It was a bit forced. Then Mum laughed and Ben tried to laugh, even though he didn't think it was that funny. That was all, but since you didn't want to pull over, I'll have to run your licence now, all right? The laughter petered out. It'll only take two ticks. Dad took his time finding his wallet. Ben could see it on the dashboard, but he didn't say anything. It's on the dash, Dan Tui said. Oh. Dad passed his licence through the window. Ray Silver, back in a minute. Excuse me, Ben said to the officer from the back seat. Mum shot him a glare. Do you have any police things that you give to kids? Ben felt like an idiot, so he added, For my sister? He's not poo-face, Olive said. It's for him. No, yeah, no worries. Let me think. I'll have a look in the car for you. It's okay, Dad said. Don't worry about it. He's just, no, no trouble at all. It's good to encourage the young ones. Otherwise, the fireys get all the new recruits. You a budding officer, mate. He smiled at Ben, who felt embarrassed and didn't say anything. Actually, you know what I've got? They've just started giving us these business cards and I don't know what to do with them. Dan Tui took a Velcro wallet from his back pocket and passed a card through to Ben. It bore the name Dan Tui and his rank, Constable, with the New South Wales Police logo, a circle of green leaves with a red crown on top and a sea eagle in the centre. At the bottom were the words Colpam Poena Primit Combs. Maybe you can use it like a copper's badge or something, Dan Tui said. Ben looked up and said quietly, Thanks. I'll just run this licence. Back in a minute. Dan Tui headed to his car. What'd you ask that for? Dad said. I... He's just excited, Mum said. Baby, Dad said under his breath, shaking his head. They sat in silence, the car filling with tension once more now that Dan Tui and his belly laugh were gone. Trucks roared by, rocking the car with wind rush. Ben studied the business card, mouthing the words, Culpam Pina Premit Comes. Over and over again, he flicked open his notebook, slipped the card in and wrote the words on the inside cover, pressing hard to etch into the leather. Colpam Pina Premit Cums. Hey mum, what does Colpam Pina Premit Cums mean? He stumbled over the words. I don't know, I don't speak Chinese, she said. Mum seemed to call any language she didn't understand Chinese. Dad? He was looking in the side mirror on his door. Neither do I. You guys are old. Didn't you do Latin at school? Ben was thrust back into his seat as Dad floored the accelerator, spinning the wheels, spitting gravel. They drove away, fast. Ben looked at the reflection of Dad's eyes in the rear view mirror. Mum looked back at the police car sitting by the road. Olive opened her mouth and stared at Dad, thumb frozen in mid-air a few centimetres from her face. Wasn't he coming back? Ben asked. You left your licence. Dad drove on sitting up, arms straight, holding the wheel firmly with two hands now. He took a motorway exit a few hundred metres up the road. Ben heard the siren as they turned right at the bottom of the exit ramp. They sped underneath the motorway bridge and along a winding narrow road past fields of sugarcane. The siren sound was moving closer when Dad took a sharp left down a dirt track. It was a trail between two fields of tall green cane. Ben sat up and looked back as their car fishtailed. Dad turned right down another dirt track and slammed on the brakes, switching the engine off. Sheets of dust blew in through the open windows. Ben heard the police car dart by on the road. His heart pummeled his chest. Olive laughed. That was fun! They sat, engine off, sound of a crow arcing in the cane nearby, siren in the distance, dirt settling all around them. For the first time ever, Ben did not ask a question. Mum sniffed and covered her mouth and nose with one hand. They sat. Must have been after someone else, Dad said. The siren faded. You got any of that drink left? Dad asked. Ben picked up the soft drink bottle from the seat next to him and handed it to Dad, who guzzled it all and wiped the corners of his mouth with the back of his hand. What do we do now, Ray? Mum asked. Stay here for a bit, Dad said. Then keep going up to the cabin.